Hello everyone. Today we are talking about DNS and two possible attacks. The purpose of Domain Name Service, or DNS, is to resolve URLs to IPs. If you surf on the internet using your browser, you don't want to enter the exact IP of the website you want to visit. To this end, DNS resolves the textual input of example.com into this IP address. The way it works is by hierarchical domains. The so-called top-level domain is the last part of any website you visit. So, for example, com, net, edu, de, at, and so on. There are four kinds of DNS servers. I will quickly illustrate how a DNS lookup works. First, assume you enter example.com into your browser. The browser then asks the first DNS server, the DNS resolver, to resolve this query into an IP. The resolver first asks the DNS root server for the address of the top-level domain server, in this case .com. The root server answers with the IP of the .com TLD server, which can now be queried for the name server of example.com. It likewise answers with example.com's name server address. The final step is that example.com's DNS name server responds with the appropriate IP which can now be returned to the web browser. The web browser can now directly communicate with the IP given to it. Note that this process is rather cumbersome and in order to speed things up, entries of IPs and domain names are cached in the browser, in the operating system and in the various DNS servers. Those servers have two databases. First, the reverse zone table which stores the link between IP address and domain name and the forward zone table which stores the link between domain name and IP address. There is no check whether these two actually match which can be exploited in an attack called DNS spoofing. DNS spoofing works if the attacker is able to change an entry in the reverse zone table of a DNS server. Let's assume he manages to change a trusted host's IP address to his own. What he can now do is to start a remote login session on a person's PC using his IP address. The PC will ask the DNS server to resolve the address to a domain name to check whether this is a trusted name. The DNS server looks into his reverse zone table and responds with the trusted domain name. The PC will grant remote access to the attacker. If the entries of the forward zone table are also checked, this is no longer possible. A second attack relies on the fact that older versions of DNS stored everything in cache that has been sent to them, even if it was not requested by the user. In this scenario, a user gets tricked into accessing an attacker-controlled name server, for example via phishing. The DNS server relays that request and gets the attacker.com IP address. Also, the attacker's DNS server sends him his IP address as the one that belongs to example.com. The DNS server doesn't care and simply stores both domains with the same IP address into its cache. If the user at some point in the future wants to access example.com, which could theoretically be his bank, the DNS server's cache will return the attacker's IP address since it has been stored there before. These attacks are not only theoretical and neither IP addresses nor domain names work as a reliable way to authenticate yourself or servers. That concludes today's video. Thanks for watching. Tell me in the comments which topics you would like me to cover. Like and subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video.